Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. And today we are headed out to Jersey because we're about to go to a GS Motor Club meet. So first we have to get this car washed. So guys, guys, let's jump into the video. Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Look at this car, man. This is why I keep telling you guys I don't want to deal with this wrap anymore. This white wrap. Look at this. This is disgusting, man. Regular car with regular gloss. This wouldn't even be much of an issue. Start the girl up. All right, let's go. So, because my car has that crappy wrap on it, I take it to regular car washes. <laughs> Usually, I do. I do try to wash my cars on my own, um, but with the wrap, I find that it gets really dirty and it stains and i'm just not qualified to get all that done it's a lot of work so i will be taking off this wrap in the next couple weeks or in the next month but sometime in either june or july this wrap will come off and there'll be a silver color like silver color under it and just like that she is now clean still dirty as hell though but it's pretty fucking clean now all right so i'm about a uh, half an hour out and I always like a nice cruise to go to a meet. And, but to be honest with you guys, if it's under an hour, usually I'll go to that car meet. But if it's anything over two hours, I'm not doing it. <laughs> anything over an hour and a half or hour, whatever, I'm not doing it because I live in New York City, the traffic. And that means if it takes more than an hour to get there, that means it's going to take at least two hours to get back because it's usually a traffic. Guys, so we made it out to GS Motor Club's weekly meet out here in new jersey so it only took me about a little over an hour to get here but we're gonna take a look check it out um they have a bunch of stands and everything over there selling because it's farm basically a farmer's market but then they also have cars come out here on a sunday so it's kind of like the cars and coffee market thing so you know it's good to help out business like that but anyways let's walk around let's take a look what we see looks really good that's carbon carbon hood carbon inlets bc forge wheels even the carbon vents. I don't know if a lot of this stuff comes from factory, and if it does, they make the Caymans look really good with the carbon accents. Like it with the wheels. Right. HRE wheels. Carbon inlets. Looking really good. Remember, guys, I was supposed to possibly get an M5, but I ended up getting the E63. Do I regret it still? No, not really. No, not really. It's just that M5s are a lot faster <laughs> and cheaper to modify. Same thing with the BMW G80. This one has a satin, a satin blue to it. it. Already comes with the carbon hood, carbon the bottom, stock wheels. Ooh, Porsche, looking good. 911 Turbo S. Do you think I would do any good with these cars? SL 500. This one looks really clean. Very well taken care of. The paint looks really good too. You really got, you may not see it so much on video because I'm having it at 30 frames per second. But um, looks really good. Mustang. Civic Hemi. I like this color. It's a really nice color. Shimmers. I doubt this is a factory color. I have to repaint it. Yeah, they definitely repaint it. We got the BMW, yes, Wells. These cars are gonna go so much in value because you're not gonna find one with low mileage. You're not gonna want to find one completely stock. They did have some manufactured defects in the past that most of them still have to address if they haven't addressed it already. So it's still so to find one in the XP manual too. It's actually very hard, but most people actually do a 6 speed manual swap on these, from what I remember, because the the single clutch, I think I think it's single clutch automatic, is just completely trash. So most people end up just doing a 6 speed swap, but then that takes away from the originality of the car if they choose to do so. We got an S3 here with a really bright wrap, super bright wrap, like ridiculously bright. Whew. What? Some people like it. And here's the funny part. What's the difference between an S3 and a RS3? <laughs> Take a look. 
well, I guess it's probably most likely, likely the years too. Maybe this is an older year, but you can see the headlights different, the front bumper. So I'm assuming it might just be the front bumper. We don't ever know. Then we have good old S uh, C63, a uh, coupe. Remember, guys, I used to have a uh, C63 sedan. Um, the coupe looks really nice. I always like that the coupe. What made the coupe look better is like the rear end. The rear end looks really good for it. <clears throat> looks really good for what it is. Always love the, the coupe. It makes the, the rear end look so much more angular when you see it from the back. I don't know. It just looks so monstrous compared to like the C-Class. It was just super dumbed down and chilled. Now you have this Corvette T8. You know, these cars are holding a lot of value. I'm not going to lie. They're holding a lot of value for what it is. They doing their thing, man. Then we have pretty much these are all basically Subarus here. Even though this is Toyota, right? Am, 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 am I wrong? Don't they make the the Subaru version of this? So it's cool to actually see this car a lot more in public. I don't see a lot of these in the city at all. Pretty much at mm. all. I think they're really nice for what there is. Every, every time I look up reviews on it, they get this car gets really good reviews. If you want a car that's a weekend car or a daily driver and the barrier of entry tool for a 6 speed manual road drive car isn't really common to find. And this is one of the cars that actually do it. Yeah, so that's a nice size. I think the car that is well designed. Just the proportions are pretty good. I actually like that. And then you always have the WRXs right with each other. Once again, these cars are also going to continue to go up in value too. It's very hard to find low mileage examples one that doesn't have rod bearing issues and everything like that it's very hard to find these and these as time goes these are going to continue to hold value like if you want to purchase a car that you know that you're not really losing money in because you guys may think oh my god the maintenance is super crazy other than the rod bearings on this and some of the manufacturer defects with this car um these cars run very long very well and if if you get one of these for like twenty five thousand dollars sell it five years later it's gonna sell for twenty five thousand dollars or maybe more as long as you didn't get any crazy accidents or anything like that will affect <laughs> where we reset affect the resale value same thing for the e46 too you get them you keep the mileage you don't od drive the car every single day you keep the mileage decently low based on the year and you won't lose any money you probably if you get these for a really good deal you'll probably even gain money um, but that's probably when you probably have to buy cash from somebody rather than from a dealership because you know they take they cut into your margins. I go false way. That's good. Got a vet M5. Yeah, like a lot of like a nice Rx. I think we saw this car last time, guys. I believe we saw this one at the last meet. I believe, but. If I did, I can't barely remember, but once again, it's still sexy, very up to date. And man, that FIMA is insane. Insane for what it is. What else do we have over here? We have the drop BMW, we have the ZL1, we have the R RSQ. RSQ5 or RSQ7? It's the RSQ5. I think it's the RSQ, RSQ8. I'm sorry. Definitely got that one completely wrong. This car is really big for what it is. I mean, you see it next to other cars, and you're like, okay, it looks big. But like, when you get close, it's like really wide, and it has a the the, the cut, the slope, and everything like that. So I'm tall. I'm six foot one. I'm tall in the car, but it still looks very massive for what it is. Like even the ground clearance is super crazy. Plymouth X3M, another Matt M5, couple of other, couple of other M5s. Then we have track called ST Ford Explorer. Then we have R8 and we have the Lolo. So take a quick look at these cars. Everybody always want to get into cars like these. Everybody wants to see. I want an R8. I want a Lamborghini. It's it's the status thing, man. It's the status thing. Cars look really good for what they are, man. They're pretty much the same thing. Remember, guys, it literally look pretty much the same exact cars so it's looking good man i don't know man do you guys see boost in a lambo one day or a boost in an r8 do you guys really see that actually happening in my future never know but this is why i keep saying you got to be able to 
get, earn more money, but then also you got to be able to borrow more money to get into cars like this. You just don't hop in a Lamborghini unless you got to put like 40 to 50 percent down. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much on Sunday in Paramus by um, the, the Garden State Mall, the Plaza Mall, they have pretty much their market. Fresh food, fresh produce from neighboring um, farmers and everything like that that are selling pretty much organic clean food. So people like to come out here, support small market, support small business because it makes sense. So, ah, come on. So they have different foods or whatever. I don't really need anything. I already did my food shopping, but if, if I would have known there would have been an actual market out here, I would have came and bought a lot more fresh produce and everything like that. All right, so some of the cars that I usually don't see quite often. So now I get to see the new M2 in right in front of me. Um, there has different crazy lines on it, man. Different crazy lines. Bulging rear fenders. Let's take a quick look here. Bulging rear fenders. Just really pushed out. The rear end looks nice for what it is. They use a lot of squares and hard 90 angles on this car, though. I can definitely tell. But then they still try to round it off. From the side profile itself, when I look at it, it's probably really bad because the sun is in the way and the Lamborghini is in front. But once again, the side angle looks all right. It doesn't look not proportionate i give it that but i guess the satin black definitely gives it too much crazy angles it, it almost looks like it's not supposed to fit the hood is raised there the angular or the, the, the squaring in the front end and they still try to add and then they mm, no i'm not digging it i'm not digging it i don't want the owner to become close and beat me up but i don't think it's a proportionate car. I'm trying to give it that, but it may be dope car that you take out there and it drives really well, but the angles are just not doing it. Like, even look at the front bumper to the hood. Like, the angles just don't really go that well with each other. It, it doesn't suit it. It doesn't suit it. A regular M240 has better angles than the M M2, in my honest opinion. Now we have... The STO looks really good. <laughs> it's an STO. What can you really say? Sexy. Ain't much more to say to say about it, man. Whew. I always like the induction for the intake, the induction for the engine right there. I think it's always super cool that they actually put that type of technology into cars. But it's a Lamborghini. They better do something. <laughs> Make me get something that's super dope that stands out. Let's quickly compare it to a regular m2 the one before it the gym before that and let's 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 deep dive into that right so okay so this is the gym before the m2 that's currently out yes the front bumper is still more angular they still have the kidney grills that are circular so i still have the typical bottom bumper just like it would be on the regular bmws right here but the body lines fit Hood fits the front bumper. The front bumper flows well. Has a proper mount. It still has a bulging front fenders and even bulging rear fenders. Maybe not as aggressive on the newer M2s, but the body lines fit a lot more well. I can't really get a side shot, but the side shot is pretty proportionate from what I remember with the car. And please don't tell me, oh, because the car is growing on you, it has to grow on us. No, that car does not have way too much hard lines on it. Like as much as as much as people make fun of the G80, the only thing that brought down the G80 was the front kidney grills. But everything else about the car looks good. Same thing for the rear end. Now I believe that the rear end on the M2s aren't as aggressive compared to the regular um, regular two series. But even then, it's a lot soft. I guess he went single exit back here. When I could tell, he went single exit, but. And it's nothing to scream about back here. So, hey, I get that it's not as special looking. But all in all, I personally still like the older body M2s, even though the new M2s probably drive even better than the old M2s. All right, so we got an NXX here. Sorry for the loud noise in the background. Once again, another car I don't see that car, car, that often. I know it's not a killer in the streets, but it is a good looker in the streets. This car looks freaking amazing. I think the design cues are on Lamborghini level, 100%. Rear end, engine in the rear, even though it's just a V6, twin turbo, some hybrid technology. 
I think these cars are dope. I think they were just overpriced for what they were, but at their price point, this car to me is going to be like, I don't want to say LFA status, but as with time, they may have went down the value now people have purchased it, but they have retained value. These cars have not went down, have not went down a lot, even though they don't sell much of them. And I think these cars are going to be one of the type of cars that continue to uh, hold value over time, such as certain Lamborghinis that hit their bottom depreciation and a couple other cars. So I think it's a good looking car. And I think it's one of the cars that no one really necessarily wants to keep because it still has a stigma of it's a Honda, even though it's an Acura, which is the same thing. The technology of this car definitely will work rewards this car getting way more love and appreciation but it just doesn't because it's connected to honda it's crazy that's how it is but then people would rather buy of course an amg gts because it's about the same price or even cheaper and has a mercedes bag on it but also same thing they race this car this car has the m178 in it because you know i'm a mercedes guy so i know that and this car gets a little a lot more love than that car it is what it is man this is why I understand it. Once I came from Infinity into Mercedes, it was completely a different change on how I'm treated, how people treat me, um, the status, the, there was just way more love and appreciation and attention once you have the specific name. That's why certain brands cost a certain amount of money because they just added to it. Now Maserati, I don't know about that. Maybe Maserati back in the day, but Maserati right now is just like, mm, any real car person is like, eh, Maserati ain't shit. But, um, unless it's the older Maseratis. But for regular people, they still think Maseratis is really high-end dope cars. Oh, it's not often that we see is this is a C32 or is this a C43. Don't really see this car often. So, bear with me. I used to love this car, but I always get them confuse c32 or c36 or c43 i don't think this is a c43 at all this is a c36 let's see he's gonna pop the motor we're gonna take a quick look and see okay cool okay cars well kept still taken care of very well which is a nice thing you don't see that that often kept it very well very well nice and clean yeah. Original 48,000 miles. Oh, 48,000 miles. Oh, it's from shipping. Oh, nice. Mm, clean, clean. Car is very clean. Look, like not a rust anywhere. All right. We always don't get to see Lambos too often, so we want to pop up on some. We got to love and appreciate it when we can. Definitely clean. That's 4TO. Very clean. Ooh, red guts too. Red guts looks really good. Two tone red guts. That, that interior is probably done. I don't. I don't know if they come this way. But then maybe the dash even has a stitch in the match. So I would assume. Oh, gated shifter. That looks nice with the carbon. Okay. We got the Mini Coopers squad out here. The Mini Coopers. What do you guys feel about this tent thing coming back? They actually like they got the forged carbon fenders, which I actually have the slit for, which is kind of cool. I actually never saw that idea and thought that was an idea. That's pretty cool. The red carbon around the headlights and the red around there. But I don't know about the red tent. It might be a little bit too much for me, but at least you can see through it. But I know I've been seeing these tents coming back with the red, either red or reflecting. I'm not really a fan of it. I like the red around the taillights too. That's cool. And the red flappers. Definitely, the stance looks really good. Gives a really old school vibe. I mean, the customization is definitely there. I like it. I would just say the tense is just not for me, man. It reminds me too much need for speed. But check out Greek GPE. Pretty cool. A quick little time capsule here. We have a Pontiac, I believe, Trans Am. Looked like it was repainted. Uh, they try to keep the original two tone type of look. GTA Trans Am. Car looks really good well put together the interior still looks pretty good for what it looks like too yeah the interior looks still looks like it's well put together which you don't see too often oh so, let's find another gem we don't see too often and that's a 5 series m5 interior looks really good it's a manual of course looks really clean looks like it's the original paint i don't know if it's modded or not but it looks really good and the thing about M5s. 
of this one, the 4.4, is <laughs> they're one of the most not reliable uh, BMW 5 Series. But the funny thing is, you don't even see um, 5 Series of this gen anymore at all. You don't see the 540s, you don't see the 528s. They don't even exist at all. And I don't know, maybe because when I used to look up into 520s, 540s, they're really not reliable at all. And I know that them 5s is probably just the same type of car that goes through the same type of issues or even more and it's probably super expensive and hard to find parts but when you find one on the road they to me they stand out because i don't see them quite often they this one i think this body style aged very well for the five series the ones before that still not really a fan of the boxy look so much but i think these ones age very well same thing for like the e46 so if you get a hand on one of these with low mileage and you don't drive it that often and you don't add that much miles on it this is another car you won't lose money uh, when you do choose to sell because there is a market for this. People looking for these old cars and these have definitely went up for a clean one with low miles or with no accents and stuff um, at a really higher price because over time people learn to love and appreciate cars like this. Let's see if we can see a nice MR2 here. And we got a Genesis. Chill out bro. The farmer's market. Another car that you don't see that often, the Ford RS. This is another car that was a super cool car, just like the STIs and WRXs. Six speed manual, hatchback, performance oriented, brittle brakes. Once again, another car you don't see that often. I believe this car was plagued with the head gasket issue though, because Ford designed a very inferior design of their head gasket and they had to like change it in a later model but this is another car that necessarily is a really cool car that just didn't get the love appreciated it needs and pretty much failed from just poor head gasket design this car should have been a lot better than it really is let's look at the nice color of this this looks quite amazing very well in tech well and clean Oof. Oof. love the color of this okay let's try to get where the sun hits properly Probably has at least 11s, 12s in the rear. Michelin tires. Rins done really nice, clean shave. You don't even see any exhaust because the exhaust probably comes up on the side. Carbon. <laughs> Better view because you actually can see the color in the sun right now. Nice, sexy color. Bear brakes in the front. Four pistons in the rear. Interior completely customly done with the digital six-speed manual, five-speed manual, six-speed manual. Looks really cool. Rear deck of the carbon, nice. All right, I'm gonna make a little bit of fun here. We got like four GTRs, one with an American flag. <laughs> but you know, GTRs are pretty much the way they built. You're never gonna really know they're fast. You can have a GTR that's 600 wheel, and you have a GTR that's 1600 wheels. So you really will never know just by looking on the outside of them. But we have a Nismo here, pre-facelift, pre-facelift, pre-facelift. Both of them are going to be on Japanese wheel. Really deep in the rear. Let's take a look in the back. They all have custom vanity license plate. GTRJ, GTARR, you, my son, you, my son. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. And then you have R35. So they're definitely going to have some cool vanity plates, which are super cool about it. Definitely love that. But like I said, these cars are always going to come that way. They're going to either be 600 wheel or 1600 wheel. You'll even, you'll never know what they are until you get, you get on it with them. We have another car we don't see much of. It's probably imported either from Japan direct himself or from Canada. We have a Lancer Evo. Definitely got the, the headlight delete, so I guess that's the intake system. Towards the turbos, right-hand drive. We're ready to full mount on the vans. Looks really good. Don't see too much of these ever at all. Definitely, 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 definitely. And it's crazy is if you get your hands on one of these, if you can, these are another cars you can hold. Like, I'm at that point that I want to get something that I keep and it's like my car. I'm like at that age where it's like, yeah, newer cars are fun, but I do want something more special. And as I keep it out, it's paid off and something like this. I'm not saying it has to be an older 90s car, but something where it's special for what it is 
and it's more the performance oriented car for itself and I just hold on to it and these are one of the cars or like the type of cars that I would like to really like to do that with all right guys so all in all this was a GS Motor Club meet on sun Sunday and um, it was nice and there's more cars still coming they go to about 12 p.m. and it's right by the farmers market so you can actually do some of your shopping for organic food and also you can come and support GS Motor Club and anybody else who wanted to come out for kind of a cars and coffees or cars and market type of meet and there's still a little bit of cool cars coming so I really hope you guys appreciated um, this quick recap of just showing what's out here and now I'm headed to hey guess what the Ben's meet and uh, Orchard Beach so guys check it for that next video right now so definitely hit me up at Boost Motion IG Facebook Boost Motion Gmail.com otherwise than that guys I appreciate it. you guys have a good day thank you thank you everybody for watching do appreciate you guys love you guys very much you can also check out the two links i posted for some of my other videos also on top of that if you want to purchase some boost emotion merch definitely check the link that i posted also and finally if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them please hit the link for to subscribe to my youtube channel thank you thank you